Hello, welcome to our video lesson on trigonometry, section 7.4. In this section, we're going to be discussing the trigonometric identities and how to use those to solve other trig identities. This is also known as trig proofs. So if we could jump right in, I'm going to go through and list all the identities and talk about each one briefly, and then we'll look at how to apply those to work problems. First, you need to know that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. And any of these identities here, it means that you can do a substitution one for the other. So if I see cosecant theta, it means if I need to, I can replace it with 1 over sine theta. Okay. Secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. And cotangent can be replaced with 1 over tangent theta. Those three identities are referred to as the reciprocal identities. Reciprocal means flipping a fraction over. Next, we have the quotient identities, OK? So tangent can be expressed as sine over cosine. So that means that anytime you see a tangent theta, if it's to your advantage, you can replace it with sine theta over cosine theta. And cotangent, remember over here, cotangent was the reciprocal of tangent. So what is the reciprocal of sine over cosine? Well, it's cosine over sine. And so cotangent theta can also be expressed as cosine over sine. Those are the two quotient identities, quotient meaning a fraction there, that tangent and cotangent can be expressed as a fraction of two other trig functions. Next, we have our three Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. And cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. It is important to note that these are just the standard representation of the Pythagorean identities. These can also be manipulated uh, into other expressions, okay? So say, for example, uh, let's get rid of these real quick. Whoops, I got rid of my lines. Can I undo that? Woo, there we go. Bam, all right, easy fix. Let's say that I wanted to move the cosine squared theta to the other side. Notice that we can also express sine squared theta as 1 minus cosine squared theta. That's what I mean by you can manipulate these identities if you need another expression. Like if I need to just substitute for sine squared theta, I can manipulate this first identity so that I can get something to substitute. And the same goes for the other two Pythagorean identities also. Uh, so I don't know if y'all noticed in my D2L uh, picture, I had the Spider-Man meme. And the way that I came up with that is with the Pythagorean identity. So I took the tangent squared theta over. And we can see that secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta equals 1. If I move the cotangent squared theta over, that gives me cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals to 1. So notice now that you have three representations for 1, okay? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Secant squared minus tangent squared is 1. And cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is 1. All three of those now represent 1. OK, and that's probably enough for Pythagorean identities. The last thing we need to talk about here are the even and odd identities, also known as the even odd properties. Uh, so really what you need to know here is that sine and tangent have the same relationship. Sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. 
tangent of negative theta is negative tangent of theta. So if you have a negative angle, sine and tangent allow you to pull that negative out to the front and make your angle positive. But for cosine, cosine negative theta is just cosine theta. So if you have the cosine of a negative angle, you can switch it to the positive equivalent and it's still the same value. And then for the reciprocal identities, the pattern holds. So sine is the reciprocal of cosecant, has the same relationship. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, having the same relationship there. So all of those even and odd properties, you need to know those. And that covers it, I think, for all of our identities that we need to cover. So if you'll give me just a second to erase my green lines, we'll look at doing some problems. Here we go. First example. In this problem, what they want us to do is they want us to prove that cosecant theta times cosine theta equals cotangent. So when you're trying to establish an identity like this, normally you work on one side of the equal sign and manipulate it into the other side of the equal sign. So we're going to try to manipulate the more complicated side into the more simplified side. And the first substitution we're going to do is for cosecant theta. So let's come up here to identities. We see that cosecant theta can be replaced with 1 over sine theta. And then that's going to be multiplied by cosine theta, which I can express that as a fraction by putting it over 1. And then I can multiply these two expressions together. Multiplying fractions go straight across. Gives us cosine theta over sine theta. And then if you go up to our identities, you'll see that cosine theta over sine theta is cotangent theta. And so at this point, we can say, well, this is cotangent theta. And now notice that I'm done because now it equals the other side. So that's the, the technique or the strategy for doing a trig proof is to manipulate the more complicated side of the equation into the more simplified side of the equation. Normally, you work on only one side and leave the other side alone. Okay? And then if they need you to identify what identities you used, this first step, what did we use? We used a reciprocal identity. And then for this last step, we used a quotient identity. So you may be asked to identify those identities. OK, next example. All right, so in this problem, this is a little more complicated. Here, the more simplified side is cosecant theta. And it's at this point that I'm going to uh, give you a little trick if you're not sure how to get started. And the trick says to turn everything into sine and cosine. If you're not sure what to do first, turn everything into sine and cosine. So our cosine theta is already cosine theta. We can replace tangent theta with sine over cosine. And notice that that gets the tangent in terms of sine and cosine. And we can replace cotangent with cosine over sine. And now notice that everything on the left-hand side is now in terms of uh, sine and cosine only. Now, at this step, you're going to have to make a decision. Do you want to distribute the cosine theta first, 
or do you want to get a common denominator inside the parentheses first? What do you think? Yeah, okay. So I'm thinking maybe let's get a common denominator inside the parentheses first. And I'm noticing that I probably need to move these down a little bit. So let me adjust that. There we go. Give us a little room to work. Cosine theta. Here we go. Getting a common denominator means that I'm going to need to multiply this by sine theta and multiply this by cosine theta. And then both denominators will be sine theta, cosine theta. However, what I, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by sine theta and cosine theta respectively. And that's going to give us sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta all over the common denominator of sine theta, cosine theta. Now, time for an identity. What can we replace sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta with? Well, if we go back to our Pythagorean identities, we can see that that is one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. And so at this step, I can say cosine theta times one over the common denominator sine theta, cosine theta. And then if I turn the cosine out front into a fraction, understand that this is multiplication. I can simplify before I multiply. And then that's going to reduce down to one over sine theta, which now that is equal to the other side because we know that cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. So if I have 1 over sine theta, which I do, that's the same as cosecant theta, and I'm done. And I know that some teachers teach that at the very end you put two little slashes to indicate that you're at the end of the proof. Okay, now, time to move on. We've got two more examples that I'd like to look at, and then we're going to call it good for this lesson. So, next example, the most simplified side is the 2 secant v. On the other side, notice I'm trying to add two fractions, which means I need a common denominator, okay? So, for the first denominator, the cosine v, he's going to need the other denominator. So that's going to be cosine v times 1 minus sine v. So what I did is I multiplied the first denominator by 1 minus sine v. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And since the numerator is already 1 minus sine v, if I multiply it by 1 minus sine v, that means that that would be squared, and then that would be plus. Now, the 1 minus sine v in the other fraction, he's going to need the cosine v. And again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I multiply the denominator by cosine v, I have to multiply the numerator by cosine v, which will be cosine squared v. And then from here on down, it's going to be a little bit of work, okay? All right. Strap in. It's about to get exciting. 1 minus sine v squared. That means 1 minus sine v times itself, and that means we're going to use the four-letter F word. That's right. We're going to foil it. Here we go. Let's F it up. Let's foil it. One times one, one. On the outside, minus sine V. On the inside, minus sine V. Last but not least, negative times a negative makes a positive. 
sine v times sine v, that is sine squared v. And then plus cosine squared v, this is now all over the common denominator of cosine v, one minus sine v. And now it's time to use a Pythagorean identity. Did you see that? Sine squared v plus cosine squared v. What can we replace that with? Well, we can replace that with one. And I've got this other one out here. So one plus one is now two. I've also got some like terms. I've got a negative one sine v and a negative one sine v. That's negative two sine v all over the common denominator of cosine v one minus sine v. And then if you notice in the numerator, I now have a factor of two that I can factor out. So the next step would be to factor out the two, which would leave us one minus sine v all over the common denominator cosine v one minus sine v. And then if you'll notice, I have a common factor that can reduce. The one minus sine v's are gonna cancel, leaving us two over cosine v, which could also be expressed as two times one over cosine v. And if we go all the way back up to the top and try to remember what it was we were shooting for, Remember, our goal was to end up at 2 secant of v. And we know that secant is 1 over cosine. So if I have 1 over cosine, I can replace it with secant. Oh, and I do. I've got 1 over cosine, so I can replace that with secant v. And now I'm done because I've arrived at the other side. And that was long and exciting. A lot of good trig and algebra going on with that problem. Whew, yeah, all right. So let's do one more problem. And let's drag him over here a little bit. One more problem. All right, on this example, We're trying to reach tangent squared theta. Notice I've got a binomial times a binomial. So again, that's the four letter F word. Let's foil it. First, secant theta times secant theta is secant squared theta. On the outside, we have a plus secant theta. On the inside, we have a minus secant theta. And last but not least, negative one times one is negative one. Now I've got some like terms that are gonna cancel. I lost my secant thetas. I only have secant squared theta minus one equals tangent squared theta. And I don't think it's absolutely necessary to write that down every time. You can if you want to. Notice on the other Example I just did, I didn't write the two secant v all the way down, but I did finish it up here at the bottom, okay? So for this problem, do we have a Pythagorean identity for secant squared theta minus one? Let's see if we have a Pythagorean identity for that. Ah, oh, we don't. But if I bring this plus one over, that would say tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta minus one. So I do have a Pythagorean identity that I can now substitute. Okay, do you see that? Secant squared theta minus one is tangent squared theta. And so at this point, I'm pretty much done. And that's gonna do it for this lesson, okay? So if you have any questions or comments about anything I've covered, leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.